Thank you. I'm Tommy Palmer from Wake One, and I'm here to tell you a bit of a, a case study about the project that we created earlier this year. And thanks for Vario for really interesting, interesting presentation. And uh, we are getting there as uh, this case study of mine uh, sort of uh, gives gives some perspective on what's the current situation on the adoption of extra technologies or concepts in the industry in general and, and so what are steps to, to create actual virtual worlds like like Vario mentioned that in their presentation. So work one is uh, a software and a 3D design, 3D production company. We have two offices here in Helsinki and one in Tampere. Uh, we create a lot of, lot of uh, XR related content and applications, but also sort of a traditional 3D, 3D content and then software development. Uh, the case study that I'm, I'm here to tell you a bit about is, uh, is a case Raute RX. It's uh, based on a virtual event which was held in May this year and, and uh, now actually this week there's another event which is part of this, how this concept will is evolving forward. And uh, so a few few notes about what is Raute. Uh, Raute is a Finnish company uh, leader in veneer, plywood and LVL technologies. So basically they create create uh, veneer materials from wood and uh, and this is really niche uh, segment of industry. So so the, this is a highly sophisticated market and, uh, and they're working globally there. Although the, the physical product that throughout the machines uh, are producing are, are physical, physical machines, but the, their actual competences and their, their future is in the industry 4.0 services and technology. So although the machines are are huge physical objects. The actual beef on their offering is is in the cloud, and 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 it's in a really really sophisticated technologies. And and this is where Raute is at its best, and it's a current world leader in this kind of technologies. So the challenge uh, for for this project and where we came came along is is like in many many other other projects and use cases during the past two years is that uh, because of COVID all the major trade shows and uh, expos were cancelled and global audiences were distributed globally in their kitchens and uh, bedrooms and home offices and whatever. So, so, so in this kind of industry like what Raut is representing, the, the trade shows and expos are really, really important for them, them to create business and meet, meet contact. And, and the, during the COVID, COVID period, it was, it was really, really difficult for them to, to have these discussions going on. And, and so, so to ensure the, that the sales would go on and, and of course the clients' productions were, would go on, they, they need to figure out new, new ways to, to market their offering and, and create business in digital world. And, and uh, create new digital capabilities all together to meet the demands after the sort of a post-COVID world. Um, so, marketing was the main goal for, for this project. And they were looking at a new, uh, new drive and creative approach to communicate the, the future of Raute and the digitalization of, the, of their industry and Raute's role in it. And they wanted to create something new and immersive. Basically, basically what this means that they wanted to create virtual worlds for their clients, which were all distributed globally in their bedrooms and home offices. So, so the task was there. And, and the challenge was that uh, to create the best possible, possible user experience all together uh, and accessibility for, for the thousands of, of uh, people distributed globally it was it was really really sort of a tough tough choice there uh, those companies that are crowd clients and target groups 
are organizations with really high cybersecurity uh, policies, and they many of them are in low bandwidth organizations, meaning that their actual physical locations is somewhere in Siberia or in uh, rural areas of Uruguay or something like that. So, so it was not expected that this audience would have access to 4G or 5G networks and, and that they would be able to, to have a possibility to use VR headsets. So, so this was sort of a, the harsh reality that we were we were to made a made a sort of an immersive experience for people who were were working with really really sort of an old school uh, PC technology, basically like that. And and there was a definite demand that the, all the content must be directly linked to the existing CMS systems. And uh, and Router had a really big project going on with their marketing automations and marketing metrics and all that. So everything had to be linked directly to that pipeline to, to, to actually uh, get the analytics of how, how these solutions would perform in terms of marketing and, and sales. Uh, the primary focus was, of course, there was this brand, brand identity building, uh, one major issue, but the, but the Beef itself was the lead generation, lead collection, and, and boosting up sales during the COVID area uh, times. Uh, so, and uh, and this solution should support a major virtual event held in May 2001. So this would be the where where the, this concept should be launched, and after that it should serve as a as a standalone online dynamics service for the for the later use and and uh, I must say that the, one of the biggest tasks here was just to do this all from scratch in three and a half months with with a given budget so so this was this was this was quite a pickle but really interesting one and and this is screenshot is from our mirror board where we had sort of other project going on because people were distributed in many, many different locations physically, so without Miro, this kind of a project which involves different companies and parties, uh, new people uh, who were strange to them each other earlier would, would be impossible without really good project management and project management tools. So our solution was, of course, our, our Ambition and goal was to create something that everybody would be in a collaborate virtual world wearing, wearing Vario headsets, but because the technical limitations that this would, this would, it would be impossible to distribute headsets for thousands of people and, and they were in different locations, so it was impossible at that stage. But we wanted to create something that would, would, would give the, uh, our, our uh, client Raute and especially their clients a glimpse of what things would be in the future and, and, uh, and create an experience for them. So the solutions was, uh, it was obvious that uh, high accessibility requirements, it was clear that the, uh, the VR headset route was not possible and, and sort of everybody, everybody wanted to do that but everybody knew that it's, it's not something that could be achieved in the three months period. And, and also standalone applications were out of questions because because of the high cybersecurity uh, policies. It's impossible for the audience to install anything to their their computers, and because of the demand for integration to the existing platforms, it was clear that uh, a web-based, browser-based solution was the way to go. So. Uh, the the concept that we created was called Erex Meal, and uh, and uh, I I had a video here to show this concept, but I asked them technical stuff to remove it because to save some time, it's not important to sh demonstrate for you the web page which everybody can access, so so you can you can find it online. Uh, but the uh, RX Mill is based, it's a web service, web page basically, uh, based on photorealistic 3D renderings of Rauta's vision of the future. So we, we wanted to put special effort on, on the style and, and quality of the 
3D graphics because we wanted to actually create something that would tell the router brand uh, to the visitors who were uh, on, on, uh, they had really, really low expectation level for the three-dimensional graphics, so, so we wanted to create um, solutions that would actually tell something to them and create the impression that this is something new and this actually gives us the glimpse of the future, what, what it would be to be routers, uh, using routers machines. The navigation is based on 360 images and the, all the content is linked to the existing CMS system, which is uh, provided by Craftsman. And uh, all the, the, there was really high requirement of data collection from this solution and, and that's why we, we created the architecture so that this would all integrate to the existing systems uh, to meet the router is a public company so there's really high cybersecurity policies and GDPR issues there so we didn't want to make any risks Considering those, we wanted to, to be as risk-free as possible with the, with the architecture. So this is a one screenshot from what it actually looks like when, when you open the content there. But, but this is all online, so, so you, can, you can check it from there. The visual style of the application is based on, on uh, as I mentioned earlier, the vision of the future. And we did a special effort on the, on the details on what, what are on the roadmap of routers sort of a product development, considering industry 4.0 kind of solutions, autonomous uh, machines and, and all that. So, so we wanted to tell, tell this story as part of the, the visual style, so that people would actually see it, and then they, when, they, when they look deeply to the content, they understand that, okay, this is what it's, what it's all about. And there's a few, few screenshots from the, from the world that we created. Um, Okay, and, and we wanted to create everything so that um, everything is uh, widely used after this, this launch and, and outside of this, this RX mill. So, so we created everything so that we can produce a lot of 3D animations, 3D stuff from, from this content. But uh, during the event, RX event was held in end of May. Uh, so. So it was a virtual event, there was thousands of people joining the event globally. Uh, it was held for two days because of uh, time difference, different time zones. People were participating from, from the west coast of, of South America and from the Siberia, so, so it was not possible to create one event to meet the, meet the, have the sort of a real-time connection with all the people. Um, to that event, we created, uh, we used the 3D assets developed for the Erex Mill to create Unreal Engine uh, project for for Virtual Studio, and 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 because of that route, we we were able to actually take one step closer to the uh, real-time VR world without actually risking the usability of the of the solution. So. So we sort of nailed two flies with the same same hit, so that we use the same graphics as the as the basis of the 360 navigation, but also for the for the Unreal Engine virtual setup. And Bright Group was was uh, the partner who who provided the studio equipment, and, and it was really really nice nicely working. We we had live live uh, events hosted from this virtual studio, and it was really sort of a, combining the, these two worlds. It was really, really interesting. So what has happened since the event, uh, uh, which was two days in May? Uh, so the, uh, we can say that the, this whole project was really successful and the, in the really needs and not that text of the audience, the Erex Mill web application was really well received. And, and this target group, group was really, really conservative. So, so they, they, the sort of uh, anticipation for technical hassle is non-existent. So, if if it doesn't work when you go there, it it would sort of uh, drive audience away. So, so in that case, we we really nailed this. And and based on the analytics, we we can say that the. This has exceeded the targets that we were uh, putting for this project, 
and uh, especially so that uh, this works as a lead generation. So in, in terms of business case, this was really successful. And um, because we created sort of a concept that would live on and on, uh, Erex Mill is currently under constant development and new features and adjustments are, are, are to be done uh, almost constantly. A new version was released. If it's not live today, it will be live later this week and it will sort of support the next virtual event. So, so there's a really, really nice concept going on there and now now all the, all the adjustment is based on the user feedback and data, so this is not a matter of opinion, not my opinion or anyone else's opinion. We are really, really data-driven in, data in, in terms of how the content is, is developing and it has to bring actual business benefit. Uh, and, but it has proven to be really good in lead generation and, and now, now this whole concept is working as the primary channel for Router to tell about their current campaigns considering their, their offering. In the future, we have sort of made the foundations for Rauta to, to, to move themselves to the virtual world. And, and so these are the first steps there, and, and it has been really promising. And, uh, and the sort of a full-featured VR application is on, on the pipeline. But to be honest, it's, it's depending on the user feedback and the technical development of the VR hardware in general, when this will be relevant. So we, we, we have been testing things and, and so everything is sort of ready to deployment in, in that case, but, but uh, how, how early the, and when the, the Rauta's clients will actually, actually use VR headsets uh, in their daily business, that's, that's something to to look forward, but as various previous presentation told us, it's, uh, it's coming there and I, I think it's coming quite soon. Okay, so it was, of course, a lot of, a lot of companies in this project this, during this three and a half, half month time. Special, special thanks to Raute and a special, special, special thanks to Raute CMO Päivi Talonen. Uh, he, she put her reputation on the, on the line here to actually create something new in, in such a short time. So it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of courage for, for her to move, move this fast in, in this kind of a, uh, doing new stuff, but nobody was expecting what to get. So, and, and then it was just our team and Krasman was, was on, the, on the website, sort of a back, back-end company. Bright was the Unreal Engine uh, studio partner and, and Nitro was creating a lo whole lot of really cool stuff considering Rauta's marketing in general and we, we sort of synced our plans with them to, to make a really coherent brand experience. Thank you, I have 15 seconds left so <laughs> time for Q&A.